The Hunter College MFA building sits adjacent to Times Square on 41st Street and 10th Avenue. Almost hidden within Hell's Kitchen shadow, the 12,000 square foot public building stands as a landmark of New York City's grittier past, housing dozens of proud graduate art students and faculty. As filmmakers, we were intrigued by this building that has functioned as a haven and relic for not only Hunter art students, but the modern art world. We wanted to explore the ways the artists use the space and define themselves through the building. What drew us to the project most of all was the fact that the building will soon be no more as the city and lack of public education funding threatens to move the program to a smaller studio location. To find answers to our questions and get an understanding of what the building means for the artists now more than ever, we captured the event the building is best known for housing, the Hunter MFA Open Studios. <laughs> Oh, we're recording. My name's Kajal. K A J A H L. Yeah, what happened was like, you know, one day I just woke up and I was like, I'm gonna be a painter and uh, I applied to this place called Hunter and I just started making all these paintings and that was really all, that was really it, you know? Um, it's in New York City. I'm from the West Coast. Um, it's like right in the thick of things. Studio spaces are awesome. Take a look around. Um, and it's really cheap. And it's laid back here. That's the reason why I'm in Hunter. I'm a photographer, a writer, and video artist. Um, one of the best things about Hunter Studios is that we, you know, you can get something that's really big and really works for you or something that's really private, um, just depending on your needs. Um, so the, this building, you know, can accommodate a lot of different needs. Um, for me, um, I like having a lot of space, a lot of wall space, um, because sometimes I print really large and sometimes I print really small, but I like to um, be able to see everything in relation to everything else, um, so uh, I really enjoy having a lot of space. I just started in the fall of 2011, so this is, I'm going to be finishing my first year um, and, you know, be here for another two years pretty much. I come in like every day for seven, eight hours, like a normal kind of ten to six, you know, like a job almost. But it's a fun job at least. So, and then on the weekends too, I'll come a day, you know, usually on the weekends. But I still have a dog and a girlfriend, so I have to go home sometimes. So. <laughs> Well, I chose to come to Hunter because when I went to the interview, the building felt right. And I know that seems weird, but it just felt like it felt like you could do anything in it and it wouldn't, yeah. nobody would notice. <laughs> and so, because um, I went to like uh, Slade Studios and a couple of other studios and they were really, everybody was in the same room and everybody was sharing the same space and you had no privacy and there was no um, individuality between the works and you also, um, if you messed something up, you had to clean it up right away because your studio mates would be sharing the same space with you. So I really was glad to see Hunter's studio. I'm in the BFA program for Hunter College, and this is my studio. This piece is a chandelier I'm making for a gallery show that's taking all entries possible, so it's called It's a Small, Small World, by, uh, curated by this persona of an artist named Jason Musson, and his persona is Hennessy Edmund on the internet, so he's doing a uh, gallery show, he's creating a gallery show. And I'm submitting this piece. This is a chandelier. Currently it's upside down. It's supposed to be hanging. But I gotta figure out the rest of it. I'm doing that. 
So this piece, I well, the way I usually start my pieces in my work is I um, find images that I really like, or just images that are interesting to me, whether it's because of the content or the colors or something, and I start to arrange them on a panel. And at first I just have pictures and I just tape them up and I sort of arrange it. And when I like the arrangement a lot, then I glue them down. And then I start to blend them and paint it and sort of make it into one seamless landscape. So I use the paint to actually bridge all the gaps and it literally is almost like Photoshop, but I'm doing it by hand. Don't talk about any piece. I, I, I like to refer to myself as like the ancestral court painter. It's about transcending transcending ethnocentricity, um, kind of looking at history as a construct. Well, not history as a construct, but race as a construct. You know, history is a scam, and I, I think identity is fraudulent. This is a lot of like coming to terms with history. It's questioning mainstream um, historical ideology and also alternative historical ideology. I mean, I use, I, I infuse like these kind of comic book uh, elements as kind of like humor. I, humor is the grand neutralizer kind of softens up the um, more serious issues that surround the work. I think that's important. I mean, I just, I really just want to get people talking about history. <clears throat> um, the current current powers that be have really, I feel like, set the historical compass off pace. And I feel like we're navigating as, as the people through the future blindfolded. And I feel like if I can get people talking about history, we as a, as a, as a human race, can kind of steer this ship back on track, so to speak. If we all kind of like can redefine things together and talk about history, no matter how painful it was or how glorious it was. So this is my friend Carlos, and uh, I moved to New York for the Hunter program. Uh, I'm from the Midwest, I'm from Oklahoma. I spent nine years in St. Louis, Missouri. And, uh, but I moved here in August uh, to Bedside Bushwick area. And I was walking around and I met um, Carlos Vega on the street. He had a snake around his neck and I asked him uh, um, if the snake was real. And <laughs> I could only see part of it. That didn't make much sense. But anyway, we ended up talking for a long time and I became fascinated with him. And um, I didn't want to document him because I'm not necessarily interested in that, but I wanted to photograph him through me. Um, so I asked him to spend a week with me. I paid him what he would make in a week at work to spend a week with me. And um, as a way of sort of accelerating intimacy. And, um, and now we're great friends. And I made this piece um, about him and his family. Or, well, it's actually uh, the first conversation that we had, sort of a summary of the hour and a half long conversation. I went to undergrad in Seattle and um, you had to take interdisciplinary art so you had to do like sculpture and drawing and um, casting and uh, printmaking and it just the logic behind painting just really made sense to me it just I think it's just how some people think in mediums and I think painting is how I think so this one's not finished yet but I'm really excited about it because it's kind of like making this joke where um, dogs are more important than Jesus to me and I know that seems kind of like a one-liner but it's just kind of making little jokes about what I think is important and so. <laughs> we just want to ask you what it feels like to have your piece shown here at this uh, family business gallery today here in Chelsea uh, it's, it's pretty interesting it's uh, I mean it's an open call so you can't be too proud you know but uh, it was still pretty cool I think I got a really interesting spot just um, picking the ceiling, so it's 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 weird. It's strange, you know, because you don't you don't get a show in Chelsea like that. But that's kind of the point of this to be generous, you know. 
I mean, it also ends up having other implications about uh, young artists being picked up, like soccer players, but that's a whole trend going on now with the art market. Do you think it's hard for young artists to get their voice kind of recognized in this in this market, in this art market? It's, I mean, it's kind of like any other job or anything, you know, you just know the right people and in that sense it is tough, you know, but just as tough as other stuff. If you're social, you'll probably, I mean, it starts here and like mingling with people. So, um, it's, it's a weird thing. It's, it's, it's a weird thing. It seems like with the, with the turnout this big and with so many submissions that a lot of people want to get their voice out there that I haven't been yeah, able to. Yeah, there's a lot of artists now. I mean, Yo, you came over here. there's tons and tons hey. of artists now. And, you know, I guess New York's the place to be for that sort of stuff. Big center of the art world.